on the Hawkeye Sports Network from Learfield. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy, proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Big Ten Conference. hy V, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Shields, we're right there with you in Des Moines, Sioux City, Iowa City, and Cedar Falls. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Iowa football coach Kirk Ferentz is preparing for his 25th season at the helm. The dean of NCAA Division I coaches and Iowa's all-time winningest, having passed Hayden Fry in 2019, doesn't show any sign of slowing down soon. Ferentz is fourth all-time with 186 victories, 115 of those in the Big Ten. That's good for third all-time. Ferentz and new quarterback Cade McNamara are guests this week on the Fight for Iowa podcast Courtesy of Atletico, UIHC, Iowa Corn and Shields. More of the Fight for Iowa podcast after this. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, You deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and hy V stores where right now kids can eat free. Now back to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Hawkeye football has had just four sub-500 seasons under Coach Kirk Ferentz. Three weeks into his 25th fall training camp, Ferentz uses the same formula for success. Practice what's worked over and over. Consistency is always an issue. But overall, really, uh, I've liked our guys' attitude, their work ethic. Uh, Dead in the spring, we got a chance to be on the field with them. Uh, They've handled the winter program, summer program well, and now... You know, eight practice into it. I really like the attitude. I think we're getting good leadership. Guys are giving good effort, and uh, you know, just got to iron some things out. I'm like that's part of what we're doing, trying to do. Uh, but it, but you know, having the right attitude and the right leadership is a good starting point. A couple of the coaches have told me that they really like the leadership out of certain groups, certain people, and that's something to be said because you got a lot of new faces. Uh, you count transfer portals and first-year players, and uh, there, there's a lot of new numbers to memorize. Yeah, it's kind of an oxymoron in some ways because you think about the leadership that we lost. Uh, you think about the guys who were seniors last year and the, the great job they did, especially, you know, we're sitting there at three and four, and uh, this team didn't buckle. They just they really rallied and grouped together, and that starts with your players. That's how that happens. And so we, we lost some outstanding leaders. You know, Jack Campbell's an obvious guy, Mer- Merriweather, you know, Moss, but a guy like uh, Benson who's, you know, maybe not quite – and drafted and all that, but you know what, what a veteran leader he was for us. So, uh, you know, you have those guys lead, but uh, I just have been really impressed, and it is a combination of uh, the guys that are here on campus and some of the new guys have come in and really added to it also. And uh, that's one different thing about the transfers. Um, you know, you talk about a guy like uh, Kate or even Feth. You know, those guys are older guys. Nick Jackson, they've played football, they've been through it. So they walk in with a little different credibility than maybe a first, uh, first-term first guy. So it's, it's been interesting. It's a different mix, but uh, so far, so good. Cade McNamara, you mentioned Cade. Uh, what are fans going to see? What are Iowa fans going to like about him uh, on opening day? Well, to me, it's his, you start with his attitude. It just, uh, it's, when you meet him, it's just kind of infectious. And our players have really, really embraced him. You know, they've really, I think, uh, you know, warmed up to him. So uh, right now, 
last spring he, he threw the ball in drills, threw the ball in seven on seven, nothing full team. So the first day of practice, that was a little bit of an awakening because you know we had about 18 false starts because the guys just didn't recognize his, you know, they didn't know his cadence, they weren't comfortable with it. So shame on me on that one. I learned something that day, but um, yeah, you know, he's done a really nice job and he's getting comfortable with what we do. And uh, he's adding some things too, you know. But I think he's he's a guy who's got mobility, uh, but he can play from the pocket, and that, that's what we're hoping for. Uh, protection is uh, vital. Uh, so uh, as we move into this new season, Kirk, uh, a lot of hand wringing over the offensive line a year ago for a variety of reasons, injuries and experience, etc. Uh, how do you feel going uh, this early in the camp? Yeah, you know, you know, I don't pretend to be an expert on a lot of things, but one thing I, and I'm not an expert in offensive line play, but I know a little bit of it, and I've watched it for a while. Uh, you know, our, our challenges the last two years, in my mind, have been pretty, uh, pretty predictable. And you know, you take a guy like Linderbaum. There's nobody playing center better than him in the country two years ago. But then you look around him, and we got a lot of guys with inexperience and probably some guys playing before they should have been playing in, in the real world. But you know, the real world's the world you're living in. So uh, I'm thinking about a guy like Connor Colby. You got thrown in, or guess what? You're in there playing probably before he's ready. And uh, you know. Back 100 years ago, it was the third year is when guys started transitioning to the field, but we didn't have that luxury last year. Uh, but I think we're going to benefit from it now moving forward. I feel good about that. We've got guys like Connor, guys like Nick DeYoung, guys like Mason Richmond that probably were playing maybe a little ahead of schedule uh, that now are veteran guys and have a lot more confidence. And, uh, you know, you add a guy like Feth and you can go right down the list. You know, I think we're just uh, – I think we're a little bit more veteran right now, a little bit more mature. Not that we don't have work to do right now, but they're, they're operating at a whole different level than we've seen the last two years. And defensively, I know you let Phil run his show over there, but uh, you mentioned Campbell and Riley and uh, Merriweather. Uh, Van Ness gone to the Packers. Uh, what's your sense about what you've seen out of the defense to this point? Yeah, it's it's such a um, – and I'm not minimizing – anybody's individual efforts but you know so much of defense is just intricate teamwork and uh but you got to have the right guys too and then if you get guys like the guys you just mentioned that that sure helps push things up a little bit but um you know we, we like to rotate guys on defense and you know lucas played a lot of snaps and he didn't start but he played a lot of snaps last year and i think we'll have that ability right now feel feel like we're we're on the right path there uh we're at least you know at least three dns and at least three d tackles and it's probably a little longer list than that and it will be uh, in a couple of weeks here, but I think we feel good there. Uh, we're not as deep at linebacker yet as we like, but uh, I think we're going to be fine there. And in the back end, it's kind of the same situation, not as deep as we like, but I think we'll be able to put a, a starting 11 out there that's going to be uh, good. Now the challenge is to run the run the clock again, same thing consistency-wise, and then also keep developing uh, guys that can go on and play, and play winning football, not just play. Your 25th year is coming fast. Yeah, who's counting? It's, it's kind of it's, it's amazing because uh, I don't think a heck of a lot about it. But, you know, it is it is amazing. Like you know, it's a lot of years. <laughs> you start thinking about it, so I can't believe I've been coaching 25 years. But uh, you know, as long as every year is a good year, that's a good thing. And uh, some are better than others, and whatever. But uh, you know, things haven't changed. I, you know, about two weeks this uh, this year before we opened camp, I, I started getting you know anxiety and all that stuff, and felt like it's the first year of teaching school again. So as long as that doesn't change, I think uh, that's a good thing. And uh, somehow, some way, we've been able to get get this far in camp, and we got another uh, two weeks to go. But now it's great to be back. And, and the thing that makes it fun is the people you're with, whether it's the uh, uh, you know our staff, our support staff, staff, uh, people like yourself. And then most importantly, the players. And that that hasn't changed. And that goes back to 1981. It's always, you know, my 30 plus years here. They've been pretty special just because of the caliber of people you get to work with every day. Well, everything's changing outside the lines on college football. I know you're happy to be inside the chalk. Yeah, you know, and I'll let smarter people than me figure all that stuff out. And but it is really interesting. These are these are really interesting times. And. I guess that's part of what uh, keeps you really, not that you wouldn't be interested, but it's uh, there's a lot to think about and ponder and all that. And, you know, right now, we, you know, we'll shut that part of things down. We're not too worried about the global world, uh, but we'll, we'll get back to that somewhere in the off season. Right now, it's just about the next 12 games and every day we uh, are together here. But, uh, yeah, it is an interesting time for sure. And, you know, I don't, uh, nobody can predict what it's going to look like five years from now, but uh, we'll just worry about the next five days here. NIL, transfer portal, realignment, expanded playoff format. Kirk Ferentz is worried only about Utah State September 2nd in Kinnick Stadium. More Fight for Iowa in just a minute. More of the Fight for Iowa podcast after this. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile, 
These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. You don't have to go to the game to get a game program. You can download it now by visiting the game day page on HawkeyeSports.com. That's right. The game program is now digital and it's free. So check it out. Get the roster, the stats, and fascinating stories about today's matchup. Just go to HawkeyeSports.com and click on game day. Oh, you know that old injury of yours? The one in your knee or maybe back? Instead of going to the doctor and then doing physical therapy, why not start with therapy first? Athletico Physical Therapy is changing the whole healing process around. Their physical therapist will find the source of your pain and help fix it. Start with them and start living pain-free. Ah, just like that. It all starts with Athletico Physical Therapy. Schedule your free assessment at athletico.com. No prescription needed. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Now back to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Despite a quad strain suffered during last week's scrimmage, Iowa quarterback Cade McNamara expects to be ready 100% for the Hawkeye season opener against Utah State. The Michigan transfer is impressed with how far the offense has advanced since he arrived on campus the beginning of this year. As a team, I think, you know, we've progressed so much. It, it's kind of crazy how far we've already come. Um, I mean, there's a lot of guys who haven't been here who are new to positions. And I think just the more time we spend with one another, it's only going to benefit us. But so far, I think we're on a really good start. You know, fans may not realize uh, that O-line is trying to get used to your hard counts, your cadence versus Petrus a year ago. Yeah. It's not as easy as it as you may think. No, absolutely not. And that and really something that I take a lot of pride in is my cadence. So um, anything I can do to get the defense to move or to see to see something before it happens or really for us as an offense to get an edge on the defense, I'm going to try and do that. So there's definitely been a learning curve. I mean, there's, I mean, they have to get used to my cadence, but I also have to get used to Logan's snaps. I got to get used to his movement, his first initial movements, uh, maybe some guys like my movement in pocket. So I think really overall this first couple weeks has just been – a really good learning curve for not just me, but for an entire team as we continue to get more comfortable with one another. I know you threw to the tight ends and the receivers all spring and summer, but yeah. uh, there's still some getting used to there once you put the uniforms on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, there's only, you can only get as close to game speed um, when you're not in a full team setting. So uh, this is my first time in nearly eight months that I've been in a full team setting and out there playing quarterback so yeah of course there's going to be some different movements there's going to be some being able to move and throw at the same time I'm not just sitting in a nice clean pocket without no line playing seven on seven football anymore you know there's you know this is how it's supposed to be but um, you know even from my natural movements I think you know they're in a better place than I was even expecting Um, but I mean for me and the other guys I think we're just continually trying to get better every single day. You're comfortable you and Brian Ferentz are on page one? Yeah absolutely I think Having him in our meeting room with Coach Bud, with the other qu- quarterbacks, I think you know there's such an open level of communication that I'm able to anticipate some of his plays already. And I think you know that's this is just the beginning of our relationship. But now that I'm starting to get more comfortable with the scheme, the offense, the terminology, I'm able to anticipate some of these calls. I'm in, or or I'm even able to understand why that call's coming in. And I think that just goes to show to the amount of work that you know, our group has put in, um, in the off season, not just on the field, but the amount of board work and the amount of communication and work that we've been putting in the meeting room. McNamara won 13 of 16 games he played at Michigan, throwing for 3,200 yards with 21 touchdowns to seven interceptions, completing 61% of his passes. Iowa fans look for more of the same starting in September. A final word after this pause. More of the Fight for Iowa podcast after this. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. 
Hawkeyes fans, the wait is over. The Iowa men's and women's basketball teams are back on the court, and Shields has everything you need to cheer on your favorite players all season long. Take your game day gear to the next level with Shields Fan Shop. We have an unmatched lineup of gear, including jerseys, hats, hoodies, and more to help you show off your team colors. So gear up, Hawkeyes fans, and celebrate all season with Shields, a proud partner of Iowa basketball and hoops fans everywhere. Now back to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. The Hawkeyes cracked the AP preseason college football poll this week, settling in at number 25. Iowa's home opener September 2nd with Utah State is a sellout and will kick off at 11 o'clock. Catch a new version of the Fight for Iowa podcast each week at HawkeyeSports.com. It's also available on your favorite apps like Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, Google, and iHeartRadio. I'm Gary Dolphin. Go Hawks! You've been listening to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Hawkeye fans, remember to hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. Once you become a Fight for Iowa podcast subscriber, you'll automatically receive the latest episodes of the Fight for Iowa podcast, the Herky's Voice podcast, Hawk Talk replays, exclusive game day content, and more. Until next time, on Iowa and go Hawks! The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.